For years, I've been interested in the idea of knitting socks with handspun yarn. When I first started spinning in 2005, it was one of the first things that I ever tried to make with my handspun, and I ended up knitting a single sock. <laughs> but I thought that if I have a sock knitting machine, that perhaps I could actually finish knitting some of these handspun socks. Hey there, thank you so much for being here. I'm Felicia from Sweet Georgia and the School of Sweet Georgia. And today I wanna to talk about knitting socks on a circular sock knitting machine with hand spun yarn. So when I first received the Earl Locker circular sock knitting machine, one of the first things that I cranked through the machine was some old hand spun yarn that I had in my stash. But instantly, I knew that I didn't like this fabric. It didn't feel elastic, it didn't feel wooly, it didn't feel like I had imagined. So I took it out of the machine and I thought I will try spinning some other yarn specifically for the sock machine and see how that goes. So if you spin for a sock machine, what should you be aiming for? How thin should you spin? How do you decide on things like twist angle and yarn structure, and not to mention all the stuff to do with the color management side of things? So now the first thing that I would recommend is checking out the course that Rachel Smith taught for us on the School of Sweet Georgia, and that's called Spinning for Socks. And so this course is entirely about making all those decisions about what kind of wool or what kind of fiber or sheep breeds to use to how to construct your yarn. Rachel talks about different ways of making really strong, hard wearing yarn besides just traditional three or four ply yarns. She also talks about things like opposing plies and crepe yarns and cabled yarns. And so there's a lot of things to explore on the spinning and the sock yarn construction side of things. Plus she shared just her most amazing collection of hand spun socks and that has served as a ton of inspiration to keep me going on this path of trying to take my hand spun yarn and make it into socks. Now when you are knitting socks by hand with your hand spun, you can navigate a lot of issues with your hand spun. But when you're knitting with a sock machine, the sock machine cannot feel when there are issues coming up. The sock knitting machine cannot feel what you feel and it cannot decide to stop and fix something. You need to feel what's going on with the machine and stop and fix the issues. But you can make your life a whole lot easier if the hand spun yarn that you use is made with some of these considerations in mind. So these are some of the things that I have found to be important with making hand spun yarn for the sock knitting machine. And that is smooth texture, plied yarn, and the diameter of the yarn. So the first consideration is texture. When you hand knit, like I said, you can navigate a lot of the inconsistencies in your yarn. So maybe some spots are puffier and some spots are fuzzier and other areas are thinner. On a machine, those inconsistencies in the yarn might cause the machine needles to get caught on the fuzzy parts and then jam the machine. Or if there's thicker parts, those parts will not knit and then you'll end up dropping a stitch and then you'll get a run down your sock in the machine. So I would personally aim for a smooth, worsted, very clean and very consistent yarn. So for me, that means starting with a worsted fiber prep, something like a combed top, and then using a worsted drafting method. So the yarns that I have been spinning for the machine have been traditional three ply and four ply yarns with a worsted fiber prep and a continuous backward worsted draft. So I am getting a lot of the strength in the yarn from the multiple plies, and I'm also getting a smooth and clean texture with the worsted spinning and the worsted fiber prep. Also, I find that when I ply the different singles together, I'm also getting a rounder and more consistent diameter to the final yarn because any differences in the thickness of the plies are gonna average themselves out when you do a traditional three ply or a four ply. If I did a chain ply, the inconsistencies in the thickness of the singles actually triple up. And so the thick areas of your singles, of your spinning, they become three times as big. And then the thin parts stay relatively thin relative to the size of the thicker areas. And so those kinds of inconsistencies in the thickness of your yarn will affect your knitting. And the other thing I found is that the plies have to be nice and well plied. If one of the plies was a little bit loose or a little bit sloppy, they would get caught by the latches and then all sorts of <laughs> problems would happen. And so you really want to aim for smooth, 
consistent thickness to your yarn um, and just very, very consistent and even spinning, the best that you can do. So the last thing to consider is the diameter or the thickness of your yarn relative to your sock knitting machine cylinder. So as I have shown before, the cylinder on the circular sock knitting machine is one diameter, but you can get different cylinders with different numbers of stitches. So you could get like a 48 stitch cylinder or a 60 stitch cylinder, or even ones that are like 96 stitches or more. So the cylinders with the fewer stitches will have more space in between each stitch and the cylinders with more stitches will have less space between the stitches. You can also see on these cylinders that there's a channel where the needles sit. So the needles go up and down these channels. In order for the stitch to be formed, the needle needs to pull the yarn into the channel and then it gets folded into that channel. That means that the yarn itself needs to be thin enough so that it can be folded in half and sit comfortably in the channel. If it's too thick, the machine's going to have a really hard time trying to force the yarn into the channel and you might find it difficult to crank around and it can just cause a lot of wear and tear on your machine. So just imagine trying to fold a chunky weight yarn and getting it to fit into that space. It's just too big for that space. So as a very rough guide, I looked at an article that Susan Forsyth wrote for the Spin Your Socks ebook that was published by Interweave Press. And so in this article, she talks about how she used some Shetland fiber that she hand dyed in a workshop with Judith McKenzie. And then she spun it into three ply yarn for her sock machine. And she was aiming to spin 28 wraps per inch singles in order to make a three ply yarn. And she wanted a three ply yarn that was ultimately going to be 15 reps per inch because that was going to be perfect for a 60 stitch cylinder. So I tried to work backwards and figure out why 15 reps per inch is perfect. So I have this 60 stitch cylinder on right now and I measured the width of the channel and it's approximately 3.5 millimeters wide. So 3.5 millimeters is the equivalent of 0.137795 inches. So then if you take one inch and divide it by 1.37795, you get 7.25. This is actually the same thing as if you divided 25.4 millimeters, which is one inch, by 3.5 millimeters. Again, you get 7.25. So 7.25 represents the number of times the width of the channel will go into one inch. And then if we want the yarn to be folded into that channel, then basically you're looking at two times 7.25 for the number of wraps per inch. That's the number of times the yarn can fit into one inch space. So two times 7.25 is 14.5 wraps per inch, which is pretty close to what Susan suggested at 15 wraps per inch. So the quick way is to just fold your yarn and see if it fits easily into the channel of your cylinder. But with a 3.5 millimeter opening, you can also use your knitting needle gauge and then find the 3.5 millimeter hole and try to push a folded bit of yarn through the hole. If it's too big to go through the hole, it's probably not going to go through your CSM either. So if we are aiming to get a 15 wraps per inch plied yarn, how thin do we need to spin the singles? So as I learned from Rachel's Spinning for Socks class, the general rule of thumb is 1.5 times the desired finish thickness to make a two ply yarn, and two times the desired finish thickness to make a three ply yarn. So what this means is that if I wanna make a 15 wraps per inch three ply yarn, then I need to spin a single that is 30 wraps per inch. If I wanna make a 20 wraps per inch three ply yarn, then I need to spin a 40 wraps per inch single. So here I have been spinning some of this fiber here. This is a hand dyed Coradale fiber that we make. This colorway is called Midnight Feast. It's super easy to spin and it, it, it makes it more of a hard wearing fiber. The uh, wool is a little bit on the longer side compared to some other kinds of fiber, but it's just, yeah, it's great and easy to spin. So I took this fiber and split it into four pieces lengthwise. Just split it all the way down lengthwise. So this is one, two, three, and then four. I tried to make them as equal as possible. And then with each one of these strips, I spun a single. And so my singles all measured about 32 wraps per inch. And then what I did was I applied these yarns, these singles yarns, into a four ply yarn, a three ply yarn, and a two ply yarn. 
So my four ply yarn was 12 wraps per inch, the three ply yarn was 15 wraps per inch, and the two ply yarn was 18 to 20 wraps per inch. And then I basically ran all of these yarns through the 60 stitch cylinder on the sock knitting machine to get some samples and see what that's all about. So now as a result, I have now three swatches. It actually only looks like two because there's two in one. This swatch here, this one was made with the four ply yarn on the 60 stitch cylinder. The four ply yarn, 12 wraps per inch, is makes the fabric feel quite dense. It's quite thick. Um, it's a nice woolly solid fabric, but it's very solid. Even after washing, it feels very, very solid. Um, but you know that this is going to last. The other sample here, there's actually two samples on here. The bottom one inch or so is the two ply yarn and then the top here is about three ply yarn. Now the bottom, the two ply yarn, again, it knits all the way around, it's nice fabric, all of this kind of stuff, but the fabric is slightly see-through. Um, it's very light, it's very fine, it feels quite delicate, it just doesn't feel like it's going to be strong enough to sustain the wear and tear of being a sock. But the three ply yarn, this sample up here, this feels perfect. It feels great. It feels solid. It feels um, strong. Uh, it doesn't feel too stiff. It just feels great. And then the size wise, I think it seems to uh, be okay as well. I think that this should fit my foot as well. So out of these samples that I've made, this is 50 grams worth of fiber used as a sample. This one is too tight. This one is too loose, and then there's one that's just right. I have been reading a number of different sources about knitting socks in circular cylinder sizes, and I kind of got the sense that 15 wraps per inch was actually closer to a DK weight or a light DK weight yarn. And um, in all of my reading, I found that DK weight socks could be made on a 48 stitch cylinder. So just an observation, but it seems that CSM knitters don't really use wraps per inch very much. Uh, wraps per inch being sort of the number of times that you can wrap your yarn into a one inch space and have all of those yarns very nice and close to each other but not overlapping or not squishing or anything like that. Just how many wraps can you fit into that one inch space? Now CSM knitters seem to use um, yards per pound a little bit more frequently. So I found in Lucy Best's book here a very rough chart that shows sort of the categories of knitting yarn, everything from cobweb, lace weight, fingering, sport, worsted, bulky, and then it shows what the sort of general wraps per inch is for those categories, and then it also indicates what the range of the yards per pound is. So fingering weight is anywhere from 14 to 16 wraps per inch, it's considered four ply yarn, and the yards per pound is anywhere from 1800 to 2400 yards per pound. Then based on that chart, you can go to a different chart that she has in here, which is called her yarn list, and the yarn list basically lists what the yards per pound are for various commercial yarns and then what the suggested cylinder size is for those yarns. So in any case I decided to get the 48 stitch cylinder and try knitting socks with the 15 wraps per inch hand spun. So this is some hand spun yarn that I made specifically for sock knitting machine um, and this is actually um, fiber that was left over from the colors that I used for my night shift shawl. So I was spinning all this yarn <laughs> last year for a night shift shawl, which I'm still knitting, um, but I had all this leftover fiber in a bunch of different colorways. So this yarn is kind of like this weird mishmash of three different colorways. There's Midnight Feast is in there, Gemstones is in there, and Farm to Table is in there. And so I took each one of these colorways and I spun them to separate bobbins as singles, and then uh, plied the three of them together. So applying the three colorways together to make this yarn. I was very concerned that it was all going to look muddy and like a mishmash and I didn't know what was going to happen, uh, but I absolutely love what's happened in the yarn and then to see it knit up into socks has been amazing. Like these are the socks that have been cranked from that yarn. So there's one, there's two. This one you can see I'm using the straight DPNs from Signature Needles uh, to basically hold my stitches as I'm about to kitchener them together. So kitchenering the, the top of the sock. And then this one still has the waist yarn on it. But this is 100% the reason why 
I am in love with hand spun socks. There's just absolutely no way that you can get this kind of color effect without first spinning the yarn and then knitting it. It's just so beautiful how all of the colors have marled together. I was honestly very concerned because there's everything from mustard and orange and teal and purple. Like these, this is a massive recipe for muddy, muddy colors, but they have turned out so pretty. <laughs> I'm going to show you close-ups of all of these yarns because they are just honestly so pretty. In any case, these stitches made with the 48 stitch cylinder are a little bit on the bigger side. I'm getting about nine rows per inch or rounds per inch. That's sort of the size of my stitches. Um, and each of these socks is 35 grams. And so right now I have about 55 grams left of the hand spun yarn. So what my plan is, is to take this leftover yarn, 55 grams, and then crank it on the 60 stitch cylinder to see what I get and so that I can compare the two different socks. I know that I'm not gonna be able to make a pair of socks with this hand spun yarn. I don't have enough of it, but I'll make one sock that can hopefully serve as my swatch or my sample or my template for future socks. So let's try making another sock. Okay, so the sock has just come off of the machine. This is the 60 stitch sock. These are the 48 stitch sock. You can see, can you see? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take close ups for you, but you can maybe see that the stitches in the 48 cylinder sock are bigger than the ones in the 60. The ones in the 60, this fabric is firmer, it is tighter, it is still very pretty. Also quite amazed that it fits my foot pretty well actually, pretty well. <laughs> I love this one. I think that this is the way I am going to go from now on. So even though I was working with 15 wraps per inch and thinking that was a little bit of a DK weight yarn, yes, you absolutely can make socks out of those and they are wonderful and floofy and soft and all this kind of stuff. If you crank them a little bit tighter with the 60 stitch cylinder, then I'm getting a fabric that I feel like is going to be much more hard wearing for socks. Um, they still fit really well. There's not a lot of stretching. Um, I just think that this is going to do much better. Now, interesting observation is that these socks on the 48 stitch cylinder, when I weighed them, they were weighing about 34 grams. When I weighed the 60 stitch sock, these are 36 grams, so only two grams difference, but they are supposed to be the same length, same size, everything, but this one just uses a tiny, tiny little bit more yarn, two grams of extra yarn, because there's more yarn being used up for all those stitches, the tiny stitches and the tighter stitches. Interesting observation. So in any case, I don't necessarily have enough yarn left. Let's see. So it looks like I only have 20 grams left of this yarn, which means it's definitely not enough to make a pair of socks, make a sock. 
<laughs> make anything. Uh, so, you know, what I might do is I might save this in a pile with a whole bunch of other hand spun yarns and then maybe they can be cranked together into one big crazy long leftover sock. Now, if you would like the notes for what I have done here, what kind of yarn I made, what wraps per inch I was doing, what kind of fiber, all of those kinds of things, and how many rows I cranked, what I did for the heels and toes, all of those instructions I put into a PDF, which you can download from our website at the School of Sweet Georgia. You just have to go to this link, which I will put somewhere here. So if you go to the link, you will be able to download the PDF with all of my notes in there, and I'll include some photos and some close-ups and all those kinds of things as well. So these are just a couple of the considerations that I have been making as I work on learning to knit socks on a circular sock knitting machine. I'd love to hear what your thoughts and experiences have been with knitting machines and with hand spun yarn. Thank you so much for being here today. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you would like to see more about spinning, knitting, weaving, or dyeing, please hit subscribe. And we come here every week to talk about something about the fiber arts. You can also join us inside the School of Sweet Georgia to get the really in-depth courses, workshops, and video-based instruction on all of the fiber arts. So thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one.